Welcome to ABC 24 this week. Appreciate you joining us this Sunday and every Sunday at 9 a.m. and 10.35 p.m. for the real story behind the big stories. In a moment, State Representative Justin J. Pearson will be joining us fresh off his landslide win in the Democratic primary, hoping to reclaim the seat he was expelled from earlier this spring. Also today, the mess that is the Memphis Shelby County School Board things so bad, one board member quit this week, alleging ignorance and corruption. Is she right? And tax hike anybody? Grab your wallet. Both the city and Memphis, city of Memphis and Shelby County governments considering sizable increases in the property tax rate to pay for everything from hospitals to public transportation. Let's start first, though, with State Representative Justin J. Pearson, who's all but secured his seat, which runs from what Millington down to Westwood, pretty much. Uh, so a pretty big uh, stretch of territory there. But uh, some 67,000 voters, well, those who showed up anyway, mm -hmm. want you to be in the office for another two years after all that you've been through. Yes. How many? times have people gone to the polls to vote for Justin J. Pearson for District 86? I've lost count. Three times and one more to go. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they got the general election. I, I, I don't want to congratulate you prematurely, but you are running against an independent, we should mention, and perhaps a Republican write-in candidate. But uh, I, I, I'm going to go ahead and on a limb and say this is probably <laughs> yours. All right, so Otis, uh, let's start with you and let you ask the first question of the representative. Sure, sure. Uh, Representative Pearson, uh, congratulations on the win in the primary. You know, I'm a journalist. Uh, I'm not a I don't know much about math, uh, but my calculation, you got 94% of the vote. Mm -hmm. That's pretty ex impressive, even though the numbers were small. Mm -hmm. But l let me ask you, uh, how do you respond to the criticism that I've got from people who say that your politics is more about confrontation than it is about conciliation. Mm. How do you respond to that? Because I have heard some people say that, yeah, mostly Republicans. Sure. Uh, look, I am grateful to the people of District 86 for going to the polls, for showing up and early voting, for showing up at the polls to make sure that we restore representation that was unjustly taken by the Tennessee Republican supermajority who abuse power and who are more focused on changing our democracy to their own mobocracy. Uh, our politics is not one uh, that is confrontational for those who want justice. Uh, for people who want to see those who've been pushed to the periphery and the margins elevated, for people who want to see an end of poverty, for, for people who want to see an end of gun violence, it's not confrontational. It's one that says we have to center the folks who have been kicked out of the conversation for far too long. What is uh, uh, what we are seeing as confrontational or being seen as confrontational is running up against a status quo that doesn't want to change. And there are people in the Republican Party who have built their entire careers on how they can oppress people. How can they oppress black folk and queer folk and poor folk? How can they oppress people? And when you have a, a district that is saying no more, uh, we've had enough of that. We've had enough of being told that we're the paths of least resistance. We've had enough of being told our air quality doesn't matter. We've had enough of being told that our children don't matter. We've had enough of that. They say, well, you're just being too confrontational. But when we weren't being confrontational, what, how did that serve us? How have you served us? Mm -hmm. And they haven't. Mm -hmm. And it's time for that to change. Okay. Pastor Whalem, New Olive Worship Center, gets the next question. Well, as, um, as an elder myself in the political community in this, in this city, I just want to say I'm proud of you, man. Um, I am proud of you. That's something that the old heads, when I came on the scene, didn't do to me. They kind of stood off from me and said, well, no, he's, he's too brash, he's too whatever. And that's the question I'm going to ask you. On the day in question when the blow up occurred, when they rushed you out and tried to ex you know, put you and the others out, I saw, as I watched the video, I saw Representatives Joe Towns and Karen Camper get so upset with you and your colleagues. In fact, I saw Joe Towns literally put, put his hand on you and Karen was pushing you out of the door. I'm assuming that they have apologized for that, but I want to ask you, I think it's symbolic of what you brought up earlier, status quo versus the new. How do you respond to people, not just GOP, but established black Democrats who think your ways are too unconventional? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I love my black people. Uh, it is because of black women and black leaders in particular that I am here. Uh, if it had not been for my grandmothers and folks in the civil rights struggle like Fannie Lou Hamer, we wouldn't be where we are. And so I give immense credence to folks like Karen Camper who've made it to leader and things like that. But we have to be honest about where we are and that we didn't get here because there were uh, mistakes being made. We got here because people have designed a predicament and a situation that is very dangerous for us. 
And too many people ha have gotten more proximate to those who are in power rather than lifting up the voices of their communities and their constituencies. I honestly think if more people watch what their representatives were or were not doing at the state legislature, they wouldn't be sending them back. Uh, honestly, uh, I think uh, you would be surprised how many people are quiet, don't speak on the House floor, pass legislation that incarcerates more black people because that's the only types of bills that the Republican that Party allow for us to pass, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but I'd rather not pass anything and keep to the principles of what we say we believe, which is in justice, which is in fairness, which is in the elevating of all people because when we elevate those who have been most marginalized, everybody benefits. I'd rather stay true to those principles that, that the folks in Boxtown and West Wood and, and, and Woodstock sent us to represent and to say than to uh, try and get proximity to folks who I know in their hearts and in the statements that they put out do not wish us well. And so for our black leaders who have been in politics for a while, for our young leaders as well who too often are being co-opted into silence and silent complicity that has sacrificed us and our communities, now is our moment in time to do different. You got a new day. It's time to operate differently, and it's time to operate with the full faith and belief that the status quo needs changing and that we have a responsibility and an opportunity to change it, come what may. See, I, how I was worried that we were going to fill up the time, I don't know, but we, we're managing to. Look, I've been covering politics for a long time, uh, Otis has as well, and I guess I was impressed with the polished way you ran this campaign, considering it's a state representative seat mm -hmm. and uh, a special election at that. Let's show the folks at home, if they haven't seen it, the commercial that was running on uh, television stations just before the election uh, this week. Okay. They don't know us. We are conscious people who will always speak up. We are always going to demand that the people who've been pushed to the periphery be brought to the center of the conversation. They see on the horizon thousands of people who are standing up. You can't silence a movement. You can't expel hope. Paid for by the committee to elect Justin J. Pearson, Scott Crosby Treasurer. Again, I've been covering politics a long time. <laughs> I've never seen an ad like that for a state rep race for a special election. Mm -hmm. Some might see that ad. In fact, some have seen that ad. and said, this guy's got higher goals, higher ambitions. Now, we've asked you, do you have plans to run for Congress? Mm -hmm. And you said, no, I don't. I'm fully committed to this seat. District 86 state representative. Okay, let me throw up some numbers for you, okay? Go ahead. District 86 has a population of 67,000 people. Mm -hmm. Roughly, how many voted for you uh, in the special election? About 2,209. 2, people, okay. The Congress, Congressional District number nine has a population of 767,000 people, mm -hmm. uh, almost 768. Our Memphis viewing area has about 1.3 million people. So in order to buy those ads, you had to pay the rate to, to reach an awful lot of people, a lot more than you needed for District 86. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me for sh unequivocally, mm -hmm. you have no designs, no interest at all in running for the District 9 seat? Because a lot of people think what I'm hearing <laughs> is that carpe diem, seize the day, now's the time, you'd be a fool to wait. Yeah, uh, uh, it's interesting. People say, no, I'd, be, I'd be a fool to wait to run for District 9, and they said, you were a fool to run. Uh, having never been in office before when we first ran for state representative. Look, we want to serve District 86. Uh, it's the community where I was born, where I was raised. Uh, it's the people who have supported me. And our job and our goal is to do everything that we can to improve our district, which has some of the most pollution, some of the highest levels of crime, some of the highest levels of disinvestment that we have seen in our city and in our county. And now is the time for us to seize the day of working in the state legislature, which is eroding our democracy, which is hurting our communities, to do something about that. But with all due respect, that wasn't my question. <laughs> <laughs> Can you say unequivocally that you really have no designs or interest in the District 9 seat? I have no desires or interest in the District 9 seat. I have all interest in the District 86 seat, though. You will not be a candidate for 2024. I will not be a candidate for 2024. Okay. All right. Otis, you get one more question. Uh, yeah, one more question here. Uh, I think you mentioned off air that uh, you might go to Nashville and help the other Justin That's right. uh, because he does have a named Republican candidate That's in right. that general election. Um, a lot of people have asked, Justin Pearson has such a great voice right now. Um, are you planning to get involved in the city mayor's race in terms of um, supporting someone, mm -hmm. speaking out for someone because 
let's be honest, if you did, it would give that person a big boost. Mm -hmm. All right, at this point, we haven't decided to endorse anybody for city mayor. Obviously, this is an extremely important position and role. Uh, what I do know is that whoever is running for city mayor, if they're not talking about poverty, uh, I won't be casting my vote for them. If they're coming out of obscurity, I won't be casting my vote for them. We need folks who've been proximate to poor folks. We need folks who've been proximate to the issues that our city has and that matters to be in the office of mayor. Okay. 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 So, so it'll be a matter of people that you won't support, as opposed to people that you might support if they're not talking about your issues. It's not talk exactly, and yeah. that's what I encourage everybody to do. Okay. What are the issues that matter to you? Right. And where have the people that you're looking at been? Okay. Uh, and if they haven't been around fighting pipelines, if they haven't been around uh, fighting for our democracy, then they're probably not the people that need to be serving us right now. I got you. All right. I got to end it there. Unfortunately, we have many more questions. I, I have no Appreciate doubt, but uh, maybe we can have you back. Bring me back before too long. Okay? <laughs> that sounds like a plan right. to me. <laughs> sounds good. We'll take a break. We'll be right back to talk about the mess that is the Memphis Shelby County School Board and Chris Tudor former chairman of the Shelby County Republican Party will be joining us right after this.